Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Wayne Tinkle and the uh, Oregon State Beavers for a uh, tremendous year. What they did the last um, few weeks, um, beating Colorado, Oregon, UCLA, um, Tennessee, Oklahoma State, Loyola Marymount, I'm sorry, Loyola Chicago, uh, my fault. Um, those are good teams. Those teams beat good teams. That, that, that proves how good they are. Um, so hats off to Wayne, a great guy. Um, my, I, uh, Kellen and Lauren, my two kids were born in Montana. I coached in Montana and, and Wayne uh, was a great player at the University of Montana. When we, when I talked to Wayne before the game, I said, you know who would love to watch this game tonight is Judd Heathcote. Uh, Judd gave me my start at Michigan State and, and we're, Wayne and I are both uh, part of uh, uh, Judd's coaching tree. So I was thinking about Judd tonight. Um, I'm proud of my team. You know, we, we were really locked in defensively uh, on what we wanted to do. Um, Oregon State, we knew was gonna come back and make a run. Um, we got a little bit um, non-aggressive against the one three one, but they, they made it like that. You know, not many teams can put a seven footer at the top of the key and take away your interior pass. They forced us to go um, slot to slot, corner to corner. And, and our guys got a little bit um, um, stale against that thing. But I, I wasn't as disappointed in that as I was uh, concerned about our defense at the other end. You know, we kept, uh, they kept gashing us. And we'd been so good for so long. But when I called the uh, uh, timeout, one thing you have to remind uh, young people, uh, young men in these situations, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to miss the shot. You certainly can't be afraid to take it. Um, and so we, we put Quentin in that other uh, corner and uh, put him on the same side as Dejan. And we tried to get the ball from Marcus to Dejan to Q because we thought we could get the shot. But uh, they're good at running that 1-3-1. One, one. We we've seen 1-3-1s one, a lot. Uh, this year, but uh, not not ones that look like that. But it's not supposed to be easy, you know, and um, proud of these kids, proud of the heart, proud of uh, battling through so many things this year, uh, whether it was uh, injuries or transfers or um, um, tough uh, a tough loss here or there. But to, uh, for this team to be 28 and three and going to the final four, um, this is uh, one of the greatest accomplish accomplishments I've been around. And I have this group of players and this staff, uh, everyone on this staff, all the players uh, to thank for it. I'm glad they let me go along for, with, uh, go along on the ride with them. It's, it's been a fun ride with this group. All right, we will now go to questions from the media. Again, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. Our first question comes from Joseph Duarte with the Houston Chronicle. Hey, uh, congratulations. Thank you. You know, Kelvin, you're, you're out there at the end. You're, you're waving to the crowd. You're seeing your guys dancing, all the emotions. It, in hindsight, seven years later, are these the moments that you envision for your program, for you, your family, just to get to get to this point? Um, I, I thought we would win, uh, Joseph. I thought we could win. I, I did. Um, and, and, you know, we had to get through the first year. That was important um, because then we could start building. Um, the wins were all pluses that first year. The losses mean not, meant nothing. Um, I, I probably cost us a couple of games um, trying to discipline kids. Uh, I remember one kid in particular, I held him out of a few games um, down, the, down the stretch because I, the thing I told that bunch that year is our program's going to be more important than any of you. Don't ever think that you're more important than this program. Uh, I, I've always believed that about every program that I've uh, been in charge of. And once we got through the first year, we just started adding pieces. And we did it brick by brick. We weren't in a hurry. We didn't try to cut any corners. We did it brick by brick. Um, uh, the staff, um, Kellen, 
was an absolute um, house. Alvin, Alvin took care of uh, Houston. Um, and he, he was significant in building this program. Um, once Qantas got in, uh, we started, you know, picking off this kid and that kid. But um, we said no to a lot of kids because I just didn't think that they would fit our culture. Um, we said no to a lot of kids that people would think that's a great get or that's now you've got great recruits. I don't care about great recruits. Never been my deal. I wanted kids that I could coach. Um, kids that would uh, be coached, uh, that would be oh, able yes. to survive some tough days, some hard days, and would I could get them to play for each other. So I, I, I knew we were going to be on that, on that, um, on that route. Um, but to get to the Final Four, I, I think each year that went by it got closer. I always thought we could, but we we had to climb the ladder. You know, Joe Castiglione, who's one of my best friends, AD at Oklahoma, sent me a ladder uh, in a big UPS or FedEx box when I first got to Houston. I didn't know what it was. But he had a letter in there, and he talked about uh, the three consecutive uh, Big 12 championship, tournament championships we won while I was at Oklahoma. And he said, Coach, Coacher, he always called me Coacher. Coacher, I hope you get to use this ladder a lot at the University of Houston. And always appreciate, always appreciate the the symbolism behind it and how symbolic it is. And what that means is every ladder represents a step along the way. Our academic people, who does such a great job of putting our kids in position to graduate, um, uh, our compliance people, our athletic director and his administration, uh, our president Tillman Fertitta, who have supported us financially and and helped us. Uh, gain footing with the rest of the conference, uh, our trainers, uh, our strength coaches, our assistant coaches, managers, players, everybody's part of the ladder. You know, and we're all, we're all kind of the same. We're just part of this program trying to build it. And, you know, last two years ago, uh, we lost to Cincinnati in the conference championship game, a game I felt like we could have won. And then we lost to Michigan, a game I felt like we should have won. And, and that and those games told me we're getting close. We just got to keep swinging. We got to keep getting here. You know, you just got to keep winning. You just got to keep getting kids to believe. Um, and that's what we did. You know, we lost to Michigan, and that was a gut punch. It, that hurt a lot. Um, and we came back the following year, and COVID hit us, but that team was playing its best basketball at the end of the year. You know, Quentin was finally comfortable. Caleb Mills was playing good. Um, Fabian had just had 18 points, 14 rebounds against Precious Achua and when we beat Memphis. So I thought that team had a chance to make a run last year until it was taken from us. And then we came back this year. Uh, Nate Hinton kept his name in the draft. Fabian tore his ACL. Caleb transferred. Uh, we lost Chris. So we lost four starters. But the ones, the, the kids that were there believed. Uh, and they knew the staff believed. So we were getting closer. And... Um, uh, the teams that were teams that were ranked all year that that got got most of the uh, uh, credit for being great teams were great teams uh, Illinois and Ohio State all those teams but you know we just kept working and kept getting better and um, you know when the brackets came out I told our kids we got a chance to do something special here let's go one and zero one and zero against Cleveland State. One and all against uh, um, uh, Rutgers, one and all against Syracuse, and now one and all against Oregon State, and and next Saturday we'll try to go one and all again. That's that's how we approach things. All right, our next question comes from Myron Metcalf. Kelvin, in that first year as an assistant with Judd Heathcote, what were some of the lessons that he taught you that you still apply well, to a season like this? Yeah, it's a, a grad assistant, Myron. I was 22 years old. I didn't know whether I was on foot or horseback, and Judd made sure I didn't know if I was on foot or horseback. Being a, being a grad assistant for Judd is kind of like being a glorified manager. I was scared to death of him. He intimidated me, but he believed in me too. He, he, he believed in me. I don't know what it was, but I would never have gotten to Montana Tech. Judd's, Judd's freshman year in college was at Montana Tech. He helped me get there. Um, and then Judd graduated from Washington State University. 
were not for Judd, I wouldn't have been the head coach at Washington State. So I owe Judd a lot. I think what, what uh, Judd taught me was that um, it's okay to be unique, be, be yourself. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of assistant coaches fail trying to be like the guy they work for. Uh, I was a grad assistant, no, nothing more, but I, I learned from everybody there. Um, uh, Magic Johnson was always the first guy in the gym. I, I, I got a tweet from uh, Magic t uh, tonight. It, it, we go all the way back to 1978, 79, 80, uh, some, in, in those years. Uh, but Judd was unique. He was a hard worker. He, he came from uh, humble beginnings. Um, but his, his greatest uh, strength was uh, his, abil his ability to get the most out of people. But the guy that influenced me the most, that, that I would give the most credit to, was my father, uh, John W. Sampson. I, I wish he and my mother were here tonight to see this. Um, um, the year we went to the final, the last time we went to the final four, he had, he had a brain aneurysm uh, the night before we played Arizona. Um, in, the, in the Sweet 16. My mother and I stayed in the hospital, I think, the 4, 4.30 in the morning, waiting for him to come out of surgery. And then I went back and got with the team and then played Arizona that afternoon. Um, and then um, he didn't get to go to the Final Four that year because of his surgery. But he, if, if he could have, he would have. Uh, and, and, and I wish they were here tonight. I know they're looking down. So that's a good thing. All right, and then we have time for one more quick question from Greg Bailey with KTRK. Hey, Kelvin, congratulations. You've said Thank to us, you. so, yeah, absolutely. You've said to us so many times, I'm so happy my players got to experience that, a, a full yeah. crowd at Fertitta, uh, yeah. a, a conference championship. How happy are you for these young people who have earned this right through hard work to do something that's going to live on for generations at U of H? That's what it's all about, Greg. It's all about the players. Um, it's all about them. That this, this, this memory will last them a, la a lifetime. They'll tell their grandchildren about this. Um, their mothers and fathers and their families and friends are watching them and experiencing it from afar. But these guys put in the work. Um, they all have their story. They've all had to battle through adversity. Uh, to come together as a team. You know, we may not have the brightest lights, but, but our lights shine as, as, as bright as anybody else's because it's all about team. You know, Dejan drove by himself is pretty good, but he's a lot better together. Quentin Grimes, good player by himself, but he's a lot better uh, together with this, this, the rest of these kids. So um, we've, taken a, we've taken a group of kids to get them to believe, and they've accomplished something that... Um, that they will, no matter what happens this weekend, is something that nobody will um, can take from them. And they'll always be known as a Final Four participant. They played in the Final Four. They earned it, too. I mean, they earned it. There's three games in Fort Worth, the four games here. Um, you know, every season is going to be ups and downs. That's why the 1976 Coach Knight team is, is the last one to go undefeated. Everybody's going to lose games. Is how, is how you um, bounce back from those games. And this team did it the right way because they're high-character kids. High-character kids. High-character kids let you coach them. High-character kids overcome adversity. Um, and they're usually mature. I have a very mature bunch. I love them to death. I'm so happy for them. They, 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 are, why, they are why you coach. And um, um, it's, it's, it's been a thrill being with these kids this year.